Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, from New York City. West Side. Yep. Uh, I was born on the uh, West Side. Uh, my parents were uh, incredibly short German people. <laughs> yep. I wanted to be an actor since I was about seven. I, I don't know how it came into my body. I don't know how it came into my mind. I just know that if people were born to do something, I was born to try to be an actor. My very incredibly short German parents wanted me to take over the family business, which was importing and exporting wood. <laughs> My parents wanted me to import wood. I wanted to be an They wanted me to sell. I did not want to. The only wood I was interested in was Hollywood. <laughs> but I was told that I would never get there because uh, I had a really hard time in school. English was hard, reading was hard, math was hard. I still cannot spell. You know their spell check? I type in a word on my computer and it flashes in red. Are you joking? <laughs> I am in the bottom 3% academically in America. I took geometry. Anybody take geometry? I took geometry for four years, same course. I took it in regular school and summer school, in regular school and summer school, regular school, summer school, regular school, summer school. I finally passed it in my senior year summer school with a D minus. I did not get to graduate with my class. I didn't walk down the aisle because I didn't pass geometry. That was in 1963. From that June until today, not one human being on this earth has ever said the word hypotenuse to me. <laughs> what were they thinking? I finally figured out that we have got to teach our children the way they learn, not what we think they should learn. So my first lesson that I learned in my life is this, and I'm going to just say this, is that no matter how old you are in this room, you have greatness inside you. And your job is to figure out what your gift is, dig it out, and give it to the world because the world needs it. If we're going to be great in America, we need every human being and what they can do. You know, we celebrate the top 10% in school. We celebrate the top 10% um, and they're and wonderful. Everybody, we, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need engineers. What about the bottom 10%? What about my percent? I need somebody who is going to plaster my house, who's good with their hands, who can plumb my house, who's great at art, who's great at making friends, who's great at sports. We need all of that if we're going to be great, not just wearing a hat. So that I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just telling you, everybody's got greatness in them. Your job is to figure out what it is, give it to the world. So I told you I wanted to be an actor. I uh, didn't almost get into college. I tried out for uh, 28 colleges. Uh, most people try out for three. I got into one. Well, I got into Park University in Missouri, but I actually never met anybody who has gone to Park University in Missouri. I think it's a doorway on a prairie. <laughs> I also got into Emerson College in Boston, and I had a wonderful time. I nearly flunked out my first two years, but I, I did graduate. I went to the Yale School of Drama, now, my, I forgot to tell you, my parents had an affectionate phrase for me growing up. They called me Dumme Hund. For those of you who don't speak German, that means dumb dog. <laughs> Very supportive people. 
So um, I, I called my parents. I said, hey, Domo Hunt got into Yale. Uh, I got into the drama school. And my mother, I remember this like it was yesterday. She said, oh, this is great. Here, tell your father. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, when I was growing up, I saw my life as this cylinder of stainless steel. There were no footholds. There were no handholds. I was trying to pull myself up to the, the sun, and I kept sliding down. I just couldn't figure anything out. I got into Yale. I spent three years there. 25 actors started. 11 finished. Three were asked into the professional company. I was one of those three. I'm now starting to live my dream. I made $173 a week doing repertory theater, Oh my goodness, this was great. I left Yale after a year and a half. I went to New York City. I tried out for commercials. I, um, uh, H&R Block Taxes, Sanka Coffee, American Airlines. Uh, there was a, um, uh, a, 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 a toothpaste that made your teeth white. And it, it was unbelievable. And everybody that I went to uh, Yale with said, I don't know how you can do commercials. It goes against our aesthetic grain. We were trained for the theater. <laughs> Their next question to me was, how do you get them? Because <laughs> I was making a, a living. I was having a great time. I was working in front of a camera. And then I made enough money to go to California for one month. I, mean, I had a thousand dollars. I went to California. I went to, um, I, it was like a September 18th, 245 American Airlines. We touched down at about 245 in the afternoon, terra firma, Los Angeles, but who remembers? <laughs> and I tried out for the Mary Tyler Moore show. And within five days, I got like four lines on the Mary Tyler Moore show. And then a week later, I tried out for a brand new show. And I walked in to, you know, the, um, the green room. They call it the green room. It's where actors wait to either go on stage or meet the producer and the director to audition. The green room. It's never green. I don't know why they call it the green room. There I was, everybody sitting in the green room was famous. They were all on television, and me. <laughs> I, Henry Winkler, how are you? You look famous even sitting down. <laughs> and then I went in, and I had hair down to my shoulders, and I had a gigantic sweat stain. <laughs> It looked like the Hudson River was flowing in my shirt. I, I only had six lines. I used the six lines to make the guy who was reading with me, who was reading the other part, I made him sit down. I threw the script up in the air. I sauntered out of the room, and they called me at the end of the month when my money ran out, when I had to go back to New York. They said, would you like to play this character? I said, I would if you let me show the other side. When he takes his jacket off, who does he have to be cool for? When he's at home, let me show the emotional side. They said yes. I said yes. And my parents called. <laughs> and they said, yeah, they're taking you, your sister, and what's his name? They never actually called my sister's husband by his first name. <laughs> They're taking you, your sister, and what's his name on a trip to Europe. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't go. I think I got my first job here in Hollywood. And my mother said, oh, this is great. Here, tell your father. <laughs> so there I am on the set. And it, uh, I promised myself, because I played this character, you know, it was kind of cool and uh, that I would never comb my hair because every actor that has ever played a part like this has always stood in the front of the mirror and, and combed his hair. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it differently. And it says in the, in the script, Fonz goes to the mirror and combs his hair. <laughs> I said to the director, I said, <laughs> I am so sorry, but I made a deal with myself and I am not going to comb my hair. And he said, <laughs> 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 
it says comb your hair, go to the mirror. <laughs> well, I had to be uh, like a professional, but I had to be true to myself. I walked to the mirror, I pulled out my comb, and then I realized I didn't have to comb my hair because it was perfect. <laughs> So that's how that moment came to be, and, uh, and then that defined the character for the rest of the 10 years. So for 10 years, I went, E. Hey. And then I added a word, whoa, <laughs> which came from my favorite sport at the time, which was horseback riding. Now it's fly fishing for trout. I don't know how whoosh would do. I, I don't know what I would do with that sound. In 1980, I took my leather jacket and delivered it to the Smithsonian Institution, the Museum of America in Washington, D.C. And sitting directly behind my wife and I were the short Germans. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, they were the co-producers of Henley Winkler. My mother would walk into a store, she would say, oh, I like this dress. Oh, this is very nice, yeah. I'm Fonzie's mother. <laughs> I've met people all over the world who said, hey, I've got your parents' autograph. <laughs> I did not need them to be proud of me when I figured out how to be successful. I needed them to be proud of me when I couldn't figure things out. And I promised that I would be a different parent. And Stacy and I, I, I uh, the, um, Stacy came to the marriage with a wonderful son. He was four at the time, Jed. Then came Zoe. Zoe, uh, oh, fabulous. Zoe, um, I, I thought it was really important for the children to do chores. My kids were great negotiators. I did their chores. <laughs> Zoe had a bunny. She had to feed the bunny, clean the cage. And my wife and I share a, uh, a bathroom in the morning, and she was shaving different parts. And um, Zoe came in. I said, Zoe, did you feed your bunny? She looked at my wife, and she said, why did you marry him? I can't listen to his voice anymore. I said, Zoe, it hurts my feelings. She said, well, then don't listen to me. I'm just a kid. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Our youngest Max is a director, a writer, producer. He just had a movie out called Flower, uh, and a pretty great uh, film if you ever get to see it. Um, when he was younger, he came running into the bathroom in the morning, and he said, Dad, I know that they make corn oil out of corn. How do they make baby oil? I said, I'm going to get back to you on that. He's still waiting. We have, uh, we have two dogs. We have Linus, uh, and who was a, a little rescue. He was just, a, yeah, he was a little guy. He was four-month-old um, Labrador that my wife found in a parking structure. She brought him home, a little guy. And he grew into a Great Dane. <laughs> we had Charlotte, who was a Labradoodle, and unfortunately we lost Charlotte in October. She was a, an independent sleeper. If you touched her, I had to remind that dog it was my bed. <laughs> Linus, on the other hand, is not an independent sleeper. He sleeps on top of you. 120 pounds. You do not get up and pee in the middle of the night unless he says, okay. <laughs> Linus, please, I gotta go. <laughs> Linus, I wanna tell you something. Here's another fact about Linus. He has the worst breath in America. <laughs> He seared my eyebrows off my face one night. <laughs> and then I had a wonderful career. But there were lulls in my career. Uh, sometimes it was difficult. You know, people would say, oh, we love him. He's such a good actor, but 
you know, he was the Fonz. And so I was typecast. So I started producing. We did MacGyver. And now he's back. We did Sightings, the study of all things paranormal. And hopefully that's coming back. And now, I, I just have to say, uh, Barry, which is on HBO, anybody? Yeah? With Bill Hader. You know, you probably can't watch it. It's a little, no. But everybody around you can. Rachel behind you can. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I'm very proud of the show. We were picked up, and uh, we're going to read next Thursday. We're going to read uh, the new scripts for the new season. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And then I started writing books. And uh, I thought I could never write a book because I'm a dumme hund. You know, if you say that to a child young enough and often enough, oh, don't be a moron. Ah, stop kidding around. Oh, you're not living up to your potential. We believe it. I didn't, I thought I was stupid until like last Tuesday. <laughs> but I met a woman for lunch. We had fish, it was horrible. But the meeting was great, and we wrote Hank Zipser, and we wrote 30 novels together. Unbelievable. Hank Zip. When I first saw this book, this is the very first book I ever wrote, and when I first saw it, I was standing in front of all the, uh, the people from Barnes & Noble. There was Barnes & Noble at that time. There were bookstores. <laughs> and I, I, my brain went, it freezed. I, it, I, I smelled it. I rubbed it all over my body. I couldn't believe it. I saw a book with my name on it. So this is for the third, fourth, and fifth grade. And then we have uh, 12, which are just for the first, second, and third grade, where we use a font that has never been used before. And then I, I wrote um, the only adult book about fly fishing, which I love so much. And it's my photography. I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. Here I am with my fish. Uh, <laughs> I carry my, my family, my dogs, and my fish. And then uh, also there is a good one. Oh, this is a puddle after a rainstorm in Montana. Oh my God, he's good. <laughs> I think it is myself. <laughs> And uh, I just one more, one more. This is uh, 8.30 uh, at night after I've left the river. The oh. sun is going down. Huh? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you, uh, I'm going to leave you once again with, if you are thinking that you can do something and then you double think yourself and you go, oh, it's too late. Oh, I'm maybe too old. Oh, I can't really do that. I'm not sure I'd be good at it. You don't know what you can accomplish until you try. My mantra used to be, if you will it, it is not a dream. If you know what you want without ambivalence, it's not a dream. And now I've reduced it to, I will try. Because you have no idea what you're able to accomplish until you try it. And I just want to thank you so much for being here with me uh, and listening, because my parents never did. Now, here's the thing. Uh, there are some microphones, or we don't need them. Does anybody have a question? Anybody? Yes. What is your name? Dolores, we met before. Last night. Okay, Dolores. A comment. Oh my God. <laughs> Dolores' father is the only graduate from Park University in Missouri. Who's Henry Winky? This person also suffers from <laughs> dyslexia. Henry Winky. Winkly. Winkly. Well, that's my new stage name. I have moved into the witness protection program. 
I don't want people to forget about me, but I don't want you to know exactly who I am. <laughs> Sir. What? What is your name? Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. No, believe it or not, the the Lords of Flatbush. We did was one of my first movies. We did it in New York. I made two thousand dollars for a year's work, and I got to work with the great Sly Stallone uh, before you know he was uh, Rocky, and you know he would stand in the street and he would look at everybody, go, "Hey, what are you looking at? I'm going to eat you for breakfast." I said, you probably don't want to do that slide. They're probably chewy. <laughs> but that came out after Happy Days. Believe it or not, we shot it before. When I uh, finished on the last day of shooting, uh, two days later, I left for California. So they, didn't, uh, they did not influence each other. Just both wore a black leather jacket. You know? Thank you. Yes. Yes. What is your name? Hey, Craig. Thank you. That's with the Phillies. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think you show great taste. <laughs> But here's the thing, you know what? You are like me because you know what being cool is? I finally defined what being cool is. And being cool has nothing to do with an exterior. It is being authentic. It's being exactly who you are and that will make you cool. That is the answer. So you are and I am, except my hair is a little different. <laughs> we are the same. That's okay. I don't know about Maria Osmond, but they did ask me to be in Greece, and I thought, you know, I don't want to be typecast. So. <laughs> I could have had a V8. <laughs> no, 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 but it all worked out because I said no to Greece and then went home and had a Coke. And uh, John Travolta said yes to Greece and went home and bought a plane. <laughs> uh, uh, pretty much the same. Yeah. That, yes. Hi. What is your name? Denise. Hi, Denise. <laughs> You drove for seven hours to see me. Did you take a nap? Where did you come from? From Northern Maine. You could have called. I, I you know, I, we could have FaceTimed. Wow, seven hours. That I'm very flattered. Really, you sure? All the years I've been in show business. With the Hollywood. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I have to say, I think that part of my journey, how did I stay sane um, having been in Hollywood? I've been a professional for 43 years, right? Is 74, how many years ago was that? I don't know. 34? So 1970, 44. 44. Thank you. See, I can't do it either. <laughs> but anyway, so for 44 years, well, having a family is, uh, you know, keeps you grounded. Uh, your children who um, only use you like a, like a, like a, uh, a garden tool, you know, my daughter would say, walk with me, dad, walk with me. And I'm thinking, oh my God, she wants to walk with me. But it, don't look at him. Don't look at him, dad. Just walk, just walk. 
She was using me as a magnet for guys. <laughs> um, I think that my dyslexia or, you know, there, there is a, a component, a, a, um, an emotional component that uh, might uh, be off whack a little bit. And when I, when I became famous and doing the Fonz, you know, I was known in a, 126 countries and um, it, it just, I've had, it was just an extraordinary journey. But I'm not any taller than I was when I started. I'm not any smarter than when I started. So I looked at that and I thought, you know what? Maybe you all just should cool it a little bit. Maybe you're not like who they think you are. You know, because when people meet me, they go, wow, you're short. <laughs> because they think that, you know, because of the energy of the character I played, that I was tall. Inside, I'm 6'5". <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. What is your name? Hi. Hi. I have a question for you. Night shift. <laughs> All right, now, for those of you who don't know, Night Shift was the first movie Ron Howard made for a major studio. He made it for Warner Brothers. It was great. It was really terrific. Uh, we, we auditioned every actor in Hollywood. Kurt, um, Kurt, <laughs> married to Goldie, Russell, Russell. <laughs> on the tip of my tongue. Don't tell him I forgot. <laughs> every actor, every young actor in Hollywood came in and met, and nobody was right. And this young comedian from, I think, Pittsburgh, right, came in, um, Michael Keaton, and within 30 seconds, I looked at Ron, Ron looked at me, and, and we knew he was right. You know? Um, I sh Can we keep a secret? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, what else about it? I took home movies, uh, uh, like eight millimeter home movies of Ron Howard, uh, you know, making of the making of Night Shift. And I have Ron directing me. And I said, Ron, could I try this? And he stopped for a moment. He thought he ran the whole film through his mind to see if what I was saying fit. And he said, well, you know, if you did it this way, I, I'd probably print it. And I have that on, on uh, home movies. He always, uh, he looks like um, a, a loaf of Wonder Bread. <laughs> I have more hair. <laughs> but he is a, a really good friend. You know, uh, Marion Ross is one of the great women of the 21st century. Really. She has a new book out. Uh, you can l look for her, her memoirs. She's uh, just a fabulous person. Anybody over here? Anybody? Yes. You finished watching Barry? No, I just, I just think you're the greatest. What is your name? Mario. When I read the first script for Barry, which was written by Bill Hader and his partner Alec Berg, Alec Berg wrote Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm and Silicon Valley. When I read the script, I really understood I was reading cashmere and not a cotton blend. It was how they took a comedy about a, an assassin who wants to be an actor and put those two ideas in the same show in 38 minutes, I will never know. And we start shooting again in September. I am so excited, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Don't go away. Yes. What is your name? Jessica. Hi, Jess. Say it again. What do you mean when I can uh, cry on? Uh, in, in Barry, I, I date the detective who is um, uh, working on the case of Barry having killed one of the students in my class. And I tell the, the students not to worry because this is not the first time it's happened and it won't be the last. <laughs> I, 
Acting, uh, crying, you know, I say is a learned skill. I cannot turn it on and off like that. The way um, Gene Cousinow can. Oh, Gene Cousinow, that's my name, is the teacher. And the name Cousinow, I believe, was the obstetrician who um, uh, helped uh, Bill and his wife have their daughters. <laughs> Dr. Cousinow. Okay, oh yes, yes. What is your name? Michelle, and you also drove from Maine. I actually drove. You did the driving. <laughs> she just freeloaded. <laughs> Anybody make sandwiches? Oh, hi, what kind? <laughs> Grapes and blueberries? I'm not getting in that car. <laughs> Give me a meatball sub. Wow. Stavin. Okay. Yes, what is your question? At Yale? At Yale. I know. You've been driving for seven with and eating blueberries, you know. No. So yes, the, the, the acting teacher that I play on Barry, I've had that person. Uh, I have heard of that person. I have researched that person. And then I put them all together. And then also I thought, well, you know what? What would it be like for me to teach? And so I conglomerated all of that. Yes, you use as an actor every single thing that is part of your life you will use in a character. Um, at one time. Yeah. Sir, what is your name? My name's Kyle. Hi, Kyle. So I'm wondering what if you growing up wanted to be a fly. Yes. When you were growing up, who did you, who's your idol? Who did you want to be? I wanted to be Spencer Tracy. And I wanted to live any place else except my apartment. <laughs> uh, growing up, I was not the Fonz. I would call a girl in high school in August in New York City where it was so humid and hot and I would have to wear an overcoat because I was so nervous, you know? And then playing the Fonz, I got to be everybody that I wanted to be but wasn't, you know? Yes. Yes. What is your name? Hi, Mag. I did not know that I wanted to write anything. I did not know that I could write anything. And what happens is this. You write what you know. Even if you think you're going to embarrass your mother, your father, your sister, you just write everything. You write what you know and you write it from your heart. And you will be surprised how magnetic that becomes. If you start, if you want to write and you start writing uh, and, and you write what you think people want to hear, it will fizzle and it will melt at your feet. You know, that's what I've learned. Listen, okay, one more question all the way in the back. What is your name? Hi. What was it like filming Better Late Than Never? I traveled all over the world with William Shatner, uh, George Foreman, heavyweight champion of the world, and Terry Bradshaw, four-time winner of the Super Bowl, had the most wins until Tom Brady. First of all, I couldn't believe it was my job. Second of all, I got to do things and go to places I've never been. So Bill Shatner has read every book on the planet. <laughs> And he wants you to know what's on every page. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw's personality is as big as Oklahoma. And George Foreman is brilliant at napping. <laughs> George Foreman, at any moment, this big, gigantic, gigantic human being, this person will sit down and he's out. But in um, Chiang Mai, in uh, Thailand, I met an elephant 
named Natalie. Natalie, 15,000 pounds. She looked me in the eye. I looked her in the eye. I said, my name is Henry. I am so happy to meet you. She, of course, only understands Thai. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there was something rolling off her like uh, empathy or I don't know what. I started to weep. I'm not kidding. I, I, all I did was say, I'm so happy to meet you. And I started to cry. The, the, the most beautiful experience outside of my own family I think I have ever had in my lifetime. So it is, it's an amazement. I, I think we're going for a third year. I don't know where and I don't know when. Thank you. Have the most wonderful uh, um, uh, weekend. And I'm so happy that you came to spend this time with me. Thank you so much. Everyone give it up for Mr. Henry Weekler. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. You can share it with some friends. And please feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. And there's a little bell thing. If you click that, you get notifications when we have more videos coming out. See you next time.